Fearless Cooking. My name is John. You could call me the Fearless Cook if you wanted to. So, here's what I'm doing. I am going to show you some fun recipes. I actually follow a recipe. You can't see it, it's off screen, but I do follow recipes. I do this. My philosophy is, is if you can read a recipe, you can cook. And I know a lot of people who are actually um, afraid of cooking. So we're going to uh, go ahead and do uh, some fun recipes and uh, hopefully have a good time and maybe you like it, maybe you don't, don't know, not sure that I care, but we'll uh, continue on. So before we get going though, I like my apron. Thank you, my mommy made it. It actually says crust top grumpy. So that is what my grandson calls me and I'm happy with it. All right, so how, what we're gonna make today is a Tuscan soup. We're gonna do it in um, an instant pot which is a pressure cooker. It's also, it's actually very versatile. It's more than just pressure cooking. Uh, we're going to be using a few, a couple of different modes on it today, a saute and uh, the pressure cooker portion of it, of course. So uh, let's get started. So our ingredients, and I'm doubling up, but I'm going to give you, uh, I'm, I'm doubling up for what I'm doing today, but I'm going to give you the uh, main ingredients for a single, a single uh, serving, not serving, but a single dish of this. So, uh, you're looking at a pound of uh, Italian sausage with the casings removed, uh, a large onion chopped, sorry Mr. Burgess, uh, three cloves of garlic minced, a teaspoon of dried oregano, uh, half a cup of sun-dried tomatoes, which we don't have due to uh, an accident with somebody's fingers and the glass hit the floor and I didn't get any more. So. Again, fearless cooking. Sometimes you can't be afraid to omit something or add something to a recipe. So that's just the way it goes sometimes. Uh, salt and freshly uh, ground black pepper. Six cups of low sodium chicken broth. We've got a bunch of kale that uh, we're going to uh, use uh, with leaves that are uh, stripped and chopped. Three quarter cup of heavy whipping cream. Quarter cup of freshly grated Parmesan and uh, fresh chopped parsley. All right, so here's what we're, what we're starting off with. The pressure cooker, the Instant Pot, if you turn it and take the lid off, set the lid aside, and have stuff fall down, we've got the pressure cooker. Now this is going to be, for the first part, on saute mode. So you'll we'll push the saute button here, which you may or may not be able to see, I don't know. And uh, we're gonna hit start, and it starts to heat up. Now, we've got the sausage, we need to remove the casings. So for that, you're gonna want a fairly sharp knife. You just do right down the side, and you strip the casings right off. And set the casings aside in a preordained place. Don't just toss them on the counter, don't be disgusting, okay? And you do that with all of them. Now I'll probably do a little bit of editing on this so you don't have to watch me do all of this, but we'll see how all that goes. Don't have to use the saute mode on the Instant Pot. You don't even have to make this in an Instant Pot. You can do this um, on the stove top, you can do it in a crock pot, but it takes some time though, be patient. I use, normally, when I saute this up, I would actually do it on the stove. Um, I'm doing it in the Instant Pot though, just because that's what the recipe calls for right now. Saute in the Instant Pot, as much as I love this device, is uh, a little tricky because the sides are so far up, and I'm not a very tall guy. You can hear the uh, Instant Pot heat up, doing its thing. Once it uh, hits maximum temperature, it's going to be. But what you're going to do is, after you get this all in there, and everything is decased, you're just going to break up the sausage, and you're going to continually just stir it, render out some of that oil. All right, so after you get the sausage to a, a light brown color, a little, little red in there is fine, you're going to put it back in. Try to deglaze that pan. What I did is I used a little bit of chicken stock, just a little bit, to deglaze the pan, get some of that goodness off of the bottom, and uh, turn the saute back on. Because then what we're going to do is we're going to add the onion and the garlic. Again, Mr. Burgess, I'm sorry. But this is what we do. So, onion. 
again. And the garlic. So, stir that, get that going. Now you might have noticed that I did turn off the saute when I drained the sausage. And uh, I did that just because I didn't want things to get overly hot. I put this back on. But I do recommend when you drain the sausage, I totally recommend that you uh, that you uh, deglaze that pan using a little bit of chicken, uh, using a little bit of chicken stock. Again, it gets the flavor off the bottom because that is a lot of flavor that is there. Also, again, like I said, this has got a sensor in it, and if it feels that the food is burning, it will give you an error message. I've had that happen, so try to avoid that as much as possible. So we're going to let this do its thing for a few minutes, just uh, until the onions become translucent. The sausage meat is golden brown. After we get this going, we are going to stir in the chicken broth. Now, the chicken broth uh, is six cups, which is a quart and a half. that in. Chicken stock, you can get at the store, as you can see I'm using here. Or you can make it yourself, which would be something that I do in the future, which you can see I'm doing here. This is what I made, and I froze it. So this is a combination of homemade chicken stock, as well as store-bought chicken stock. And it all works. So after we get the chicken stock in there, we're going to add the oregano, which I suppose you could have done with the onions, doesn't matter. Stir that in. So in here now, we've got sausage, onions, garlic, chicken stock, and oregano. And we're just going to stir this up. At this point, if, you know, dried tomatoes as well. But again, these things happen and what are you going to do? You just go and move on. I could go to the store and get it, but it's a long way away and I don't really have the time today, so that's just the way it worked out. Alright, so after all that's in there, hit the cancel button on here to turn off the saute. And then we're going to put on the lid. Alright, you might be able to hear the steam starting to come out of that now. Little, little geyser effect as some of that steam and water hit. You know, you know the expression a wash pot doesn't boil. Well, the same holds true for a pressure cooker, but I'm not subjecting you to the entire thing, just this, this part right here. So there we go. And now, with that up like that, pressure inside is building. And uh, if you can smell what I smell, it smells great. Pressure inside is building, and then once it hits a certain pressure, the timer is going to activate. And this machine keeps everything, um, as far as the pressure on the inside, high pressure, but it even. Okay, so the... Uh, Instant Pot just sounded, the five minutes are up, the pressure is done, so we're going to do what's called a quick release. It's this switch right here. I'll try it with the other hand, so you can see this switch right here. I'm going to pull this back, steam is going to come out. Try to keep your fingers away as much as possible. It is hot steam after all.
just like that. All right, so once that stopper drops, go ahead and twist, open it up, and that's what it looks like on the inside. One of the beauties about the uh, Instant Pot is it's got this little holder there with a little, I don't know what you'd call it, a little uh, trough kind of a thing, and water actually runs through and goes to a collecting cup in the back. Okay, so after you do this, I always like to give it a quick stir, just because it looks pretty good. Now, we're going to put this on saute. So we have to hit cancel and then put it on saute and start. It's getting hot, it's doing its thing. It is hot now, obviously. And then we're going to put the kale in. The kale is going to come in and it's going to get wilted. Pull this out of the little. And you just keep stirring for a good couple of minutes. You want that kale nice and soft. What's interesting about kale is, yeah, sure, it's got some great health benefits to it, of course, but I happen to really like the brilliant green color that it offers. So we do this for a good two minutes because you want everything soft. Before you serve it. All right, now that is good and wilted. So now we're going to add the cream. I'm going to stir that about a minute. Set that aside. And that, folks, is Tuscan soup without the sun dried tomatoes. All right, so what we have here is that Tuscan soup. We're gonna give it a try. Put a little bit of uh, shaved Parmesan on top. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's really, really good. Even without the sun-dried tomatoes. So listen, I'm gonna to continue to do this. I hope you folks enjoyed it. I'd like to uh, try and do this once a week. Please, if you have watched it, leave your comments on it. It's just me by myself doing this right now, so I realize that it looks like it was put together by, you know, an amateur. But uh, have some, let's have some fun. All right, it's all about it's all about cooking. It's all about not being afraid to do different things. I'm trying to do this, for instance. So let's have a good time, shall we? Thanks, guys, and uh, I'll see you next time. Cooking without fear, fearless cooking. I'll figure it out. All right, I'm John. We'll talk to you. Bye.